So today is lesson 10. So we've only actually got two more lessons after today and then our exam in week 13. So things are happening quickly. So what we wanna to do today is continue on working with authentication. We started last week, um, we started implementing, we implemented functional registration and login in our application. Um, but we want to do some more with it because our, we still actually haven't implemented any security. Everything on our website right now is still public. An anonymous user can come to the site without logging in. They can add, they can edit, they can delete. We're also going to want to enhance the password security. Um, and then we're going to talk about a few other super important concepts. These are more just kind of a conversation. I'm going to introduce a few things to you. And that is we're going to talk about SSL and the OWASP project, and SSL in particular is really critical. So the things we need to do today are authentic authentication checking on our list page, our form, our save, and our delete pages. So as someone who's not logged into the site, I should not be able to see these links, and I shouldn't be able to access pages like our game details form unless I'm logged into the site. So we're going to have to add all that authentication checking. We want to make changes in our navigation bar so that it works like this. When I'm, I'm anonymous, I shouldn't see any of the links. And my nav bar should say register and log in. Once I log in, if you watch the nav bar up here, Register and login were gonna disappear, and my username and logout will appear, and then this page now gives me access. So we're gonna to wanna to implement those things. We also need to implement a logout. So if I click logout, my, again, my navigation bar toggles again, and I am back to a read-only view of the data in the database. So we wanna implement all that today in our gaming site. And then we'll spend some time talking about SSL. I think we could take error handling out because we did deal with error handling already. Okay, so we've got a fair bit to do. So if you wanna get your project up and running, mine's already open. So connect to the VPN and start up your web server and we can open up our project in php storm then we can just load it up in the browser So the first thing we're going to do is complete the basic authentication. So we have a number of pages in our application that should be private, that users shouldn't be able to access at all unless they're logged into the site. So if we kind of have a look at what's here, which pages you can just put them in the chat. Which pages do we need to make entirely private? Somebody should not be able to load at all if they're not logged in. So if you see one PHP file we should secure, just put the name in the chat. So remember, our overall goal is anonymous users can only look at our data, but only authenticated users have the ability to change anything. So what pages would be involved? Um, okay, Tanya, good point. So games, we will add some checks on this page, but we don't need to block access. 
So an anonymous user could still see the list, but it would look like this instead of this. Um, okay, Chris, we don't actually have an authentication page. So, uh, sorry, of the existing pages that we have, which ones need to be secured? So, Tanya, we will add some security check on games, yes, but we'll still allow an anonymous user to load it. But which files, in which files can users actually change data? If you look at the list of files we've got. Okay, that's one. So on delete game, right, we're gonna want an authentication check here. Absolutely. Yep, game details as well, right? Because this is our form where we can add or we can edit. So right now, and as, as an anonymous user, I've got access to this. So those pages, and there's one more critical one. You got it, Tanya, and on our save page. So none of these pages should be accessible, delete, details, or save, unless the user's logged in. So we're gonna write a simple security check, and Chris, we're gonna take your suggestion. We'll create that security check, an authentication page, as its own include file, because we need that same security check running on all pages. So I'm actually just gonna open just the three pages we need for now. So I've got, so we'll open up delete game, game details and save game. I'm also just gonna open up our validate page for a minute because this has the important information we need to do our authentication. So if we take a quick look at the code, so you can see in my tabs, the four files we wanna have open now, delete game, game details, save game. So this page, we wrote it last week. We take the username and password from our login form. We check in the database if the username is found, exists. And if it does, we use the PHP password verify method to see whether the user entered the right password. And if they gave us the right credentials, we called session start which accesses the current session. And then we took their username, their email address, and we stored it in a session variable. So this session variable is gonna be the key that we can use to check on other pages if our user is logged in or if they're anonymous. So this is gonna tell us if we have a value, if we have a session variable called username, that means this person's logged in and we're going to let them give them access to all of these pages. Okay. If this session variable is empty, that means either the user didn't log in or they logged in, but their session has timed out. And in effect, they're now logged out again. So this session username variable is how we can check um, we either we can grant access or we can deny access. So we need the same logic running in all of these pages. So it would make sense to put that logic into its own separate file, which I think Chris is kind of what you were suggest suggesting. So let's make a new file first, and then we can include it in delete, details and save. So I'm gonna make a new PHP file. I like to give my include file short names because it's just saves us typing time, reduces the chance of misspell of spelling mistakes. We'll just call it auth.php. Now this is a code only file. There's no actual HTML here. So you can wipe out any HTML and just put on a set of PHP tags. So 
So we'll call session start if it hasn't been called already. Because you can only call session start once per page. So we can check the session status. And if it's set to none, then we'll call session start. And now we want to check for a session variable called username. to see if the user is logged in. We'll say if empty, and we're gonna use our session object. So if there's no username stored in the session variable, that means our user is anonymous. So what happens, what should we do? What happens on a website when you try to access a private page, but you're not logged into the site? Where do most websites take you in that case? And I can try it, for example, on Blackboard. Yeah, David, usually, yeah, it takes us typically to the login, right? So if I copy this URL here in this Firefox window, I'm logged in. But if I go to a private window, paste in our lesson 10 folder link, Blackboard kicks me to the login screen and asks me to sign in. So yes, David and Nafise. Um, it could go to the register page, Chris, that would be okay, but typically, users will get sent to the login page if they try and access a resource that they are not allowed to access. So in this case, we use header location to take them to the login screen. And then we also want to stop all other page execution. So we'll call exit. So don't run any other code on the page. Just take the user to the login screen. So now any page that we want to make completely private, we can just include this file somewhere near the top of the page. If session start hasn't already been called, it'll get in executed. And then we're gonna look to see if this user's username, which is their email address, if there's an active session variable. And if there isn't, that means the user's not logged into the site. So we're gonna block them from loading the page they want, and we're gonna send them to log in instead. Does anybody have any questions about our authentication check so far. It's not active. We'll need to include it, but this should be all the code we need. Yep, that's fine, no problem. Thank you, Tanya, for letting me know. It's helpful for me to know <laughs> where people are at. So the first page I'm actually want to try this on is I'm going to include it on the game details page because then we can click a link to add a game or edit a game and we should get sent to the login screen. So we can test it out there and if once it's working, we can include it in delete and we can include it in the save game page. Tanya, maybe just give me a heads up when you're, you've got what you need.
Okay. If you have this already, then I want you to go to your game details page and include the auth file up at the top of the page. And then you can go and try out your add a game link. And I will catch up and add it into my file in just a second. So I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go, if, if you, and if anybody needs to see this page again, I can come back to it. So right up at the top, before we even do this, I'm going to add our authentication check. So I'll just include auth.php. So just one line at the top. So I've added line three. Now to try it out. So I'm anonymous here. I'm logged out of the, not in the logged in. And if I click add a new game, because I'm not logged in, it now takes me here. Once I log in with user at gc.ca and test one, two, three, four, which I'll put in the chat. Those are the credentials I had everybody create last week. If I log in and go to try to add a new game again, now I should be allowed in. So once I log in, I can load this page. But as an anonymous user, it takes me off to the login screen. So test that out, make sure it's working on your game details. And once it is, you can add this include statement to both delete game and save game, basically right at the top of those files. Because none of the code that's in those pages needs to run if our user's not logged in. We want to do our security check probably first thing. So I'm just going to open up my delete page, scroll up to the top. I can even put it, I can put it on line one if I want. But I'll just put it right at the start of the block of PHP code. We don't need to do any of this code on delete if the user is not logged in. And it will be the same on our save page. So again, as soon as I open my PHP on save, I'm going to include my auth file. Now it is going to be a little easier to test this if we also have the ability to log out. Right now, the only way, once we log in, <laughs> the only way you can log out is to close your browser. That'll destroy your session. If you close the browser, not just the tab, you close the browser tab but have other browser tabs open, your session is still there. So I'd have to close Firefox entirely. So let's add our logout feature is much is pretty simple. Let's add the logout feature as well because this is going to make it easier for us to log in and log out and kind of see the and start to see the differences between what an authenticated an authenticated user can see and do and what an anonymous user can see and do. Does anybody have questions so far about our auth file and including it? 
to secure, delete game, game details, and save game. I'm thinking so far what we've done today is probably a little less complex than what we did last week. But if you have a question, please ask before we move on to do logout. And then we'll need to come back to the visual elements on the games page. Because anonymous users and authenticated users, they're going to see different things on that page. Our next step then is going to be to build a simple logout page. And we can add a link to it in our navigation bar as well. So I'm going to make a new PHP file called logout. You can call it whatever you want. If you want to call it sign out, up to you. So create the new file. There's going to be only PHP code. So again, just like with our auth file and our DB file, we can take out any HTML that's in there. We don't need any HTML. It's a hidden page. Just basically logs the user out and redirects. So you could just delete everything. So what we will do will be access the session. We're going to remove all session variables. end the session. And typically once you log out of a site, most sites, they, they may take you to their homepage. Most sites actually take you back to the login screen. So four lines of PHP here. And then we're going to add a logout link into our header. So we'll call session start. PHP has a method to get rid of all session variables at once. We're only using one in this site right now. We're using, we are creating a session variable called username when someone logs in. But in case we add others later, we just want to remove all of them. So we can call session unset. And then we call one other method of the session, which is destroy. And our login everyone's familiar with, we're going to use header location, exact same code we put in the auth file. Once you log out, destroy everything in memory related to this user. So they've become an anonymous user again, take them back to the login screen. So we'll need to modify our header. We've built this logout page, but Currently in our site, there's no link to it. There's no way to actually trigger the logout other than manually typing the address and adding logout.php at the end of our URL. So once your file is done, open up your header and add a new link at the end of your navigation bar that says logout and links to your logout.php file. I'll leave this code up here for another minute. If you've already done with this file, <laughs> yes, I love the destroy method. You'd think they would have just had like a method called like, if they have start, you'd think they'd have end, but I love destroy. So our header will get a little more complex in a bit. We'll add the logic later 
to kind of show or hide the different links. But for now, we'll just hard code in the logout link. So open up your header. And you can just copy the login link that we've got here. Copy it, paste it, and just change the href and the text of the link. So instead of linking to login, it links to logout. And so the text on the link says logout. You know, nothing earth shattering here. This is just a standard HTML anchor tag. So now we should be able to see a little more easily the different behaviors that we've enabled using our auth file. So right now, if I click add a new game, it lets me into game details. Or if I click on a game, again, it takes me into the game details. If I log out, however, I go back to games. Now when I click add, I'm locked out, right? It bounces me over to the login screen because I don't have access. If I go back to our games, click on the, a game title, same thing, no access. If I try to delete a game and say, okay, no access, and my game is still here. So with that little simple auth file and by including it, we've now prevented an anonymous user from changing any of the games in the database. They can't add, they can't edit, they can't delete. We also though have to deal with the interface here. When I'm logged out, I don't even wanna see, I don't even wanna show users the add new game link I don't want to show them this column and my game titles should not be links. We don't generally want to show users anything they don't have access to. Even though the code on these pages prevents them, we shouldn't sh even show them these things. Just like on Blackboard, if we're looking at the lesson 10 folder, right? I see visual elements like these arrows. I see these elements here. I see items that are invisible. Whereas for security, Blackboard hides anything that you guys can't see. It doesn't give you these arrows and just prevent you from clicking them. You can't even see them at all. So there's logic in the UI, in the interface, that determines whether certain elements should be visible or invisible depending on who the user is. So we wanna do this here as well. So when I'm anonymous, it should look just like this, just HTML with no links or buttons. I get a read only view. So we're gonna to need to add some, a bunch of if statements around our links and buttons on the games page. So Tanya, coming back to your question from earlier, I don't wanna block access entirely, so we don't wanna include the auth file. We're just gonna to need to add logic to games.php to show or hide different elements, if that makes sense. Does anybody have questions so far before we open up this file and start adding that UI logic. All right, so games is our next victim. Um, 
Now we're going to need to use We're going to need to check the session username a bunch of times here, right? Because we're going to need to check it around this link. We'll need to check it in this column and in this column. So to simplify things a bit, I think, because we're going to have to call session start, eventually we're also going to want session to use the session in our header. Um, so I think in terms of doing this, let's do it in our header first. It's going to be simpler. So, so I'm sorry, we'll come back to this page in a minute. Let's deal with this part of our navigation. So right now we've got three links, but there's no indication whether I'm logged in or logged out. We want to modify our header. So we can easily know visually whether we're logged in or not. So we're going to add some logic up here in the header first, and that'll make it a little easier for us to implement the code on the games page. So I'm going to add one more. Link, first of all. We'll just put in an empty link first here. And what we want to put in here is the session username. So when somebody's logged in, we're going to print their email address in the nav bar. And now we want to divide this section of our nav bar. We don't want to show all four of these. We're either showing these two or we're showing links three and four, but we're never going to show all four of these together. So we want some logic in here. So I'm going to add some spacing. I'm going to indent these because we're going to do an if else. So inside of my UL, open a set of PHP tags and say if something I'm going to open my tag here. And here's going to be my else. So we're kind of going in and out of PHP tags. We're going to check some kind of condition. And we're either going to show register and login or We're going to show the username and log out, but we're never going to show all of the four of these together anymore. So what should our condition be? When do we show register and log in? And when do we show the username and log out? I know the syntax is tricky. I'll actually post the code for you in a minute. But how can we determine, how do we determine which set of links to show? How do we know if our user is logged in or anonymous?
Any ideas? How do we know? Yeah. Who could be? Go yeah ahead, how Fritz. about Echo or something? Um, okay, well, Echo will give us an output. We need to make it, we actually need to make a decision. Are we going to output these links? Or are we going to output these links? What will tell us which ones to, so we have two scenarios, right? Our user is anonymous or our user is logged in. Was if the user is anonymous. Right. Yeah, so if the user is anonymous, that's right, Chris. We want to show these. Okay, so David, yes, you've got on the right track. If our session username, say if it's empty. So if there is no username stored in the session, that means they're anonymous. So when we don't know who they are, we're going to give them the options to register or log in. If the session username is not empty, they've already logged in. So we can display who they are and give them the option to log out. So I'm going to try this. I'll put up the code in just a minute because we may have to modify it just a little. Let's see how it works as it is. So I'll go to log in. So notice it says register and log in. So that suggests I'm anonymous. Ah, but when I come back here, <laughs> sorry, I am logged in. So when I log out, Okay, didn't quite work because these I just logged into the site, but my nav bar still shows these. I don't see my username and I don't see log out. Any idea why? So it didn't quite work. I'm missing one small thing. So these links show all the time. Why is this evaluating to empty even though I logged in? Remember, anytime we want to use the session, we have to do something first. What will we need to do before we try to read the session variable? We're doing it on this page. We need to do something anytime we want to access a session variable. So we need one of the line one of the lines of code on this page. Which line number do you think it might be? So, yeah, line three. Yeah, or we could just call. Sure. So let's copy line three. If we haven't already, if we have no session status, we need to call session start first. So access current session first. So I'm going to try that. I'll log in again. And now it shows user it shows my username and log out. We know I'm logged in because I can add I can edit. And now if I click log out, Right, my nav bar changes back to register and log in. And the site knows that I'm anonymous. 
So here's this whole block of code for the header. I'll put it up on paste bin. So now our navigation bar is behaving the way we want it to. The links are gonna change depending on whether the user is anonymous or authenticated. Anonymous users see register and log in. And a user who's authenticated themselves sees their username and they see log out. So we have to call session start and then we can check for this session variable. When there's no value, we don't know who the person is. If there is a value, we can display the value and give them the option to sign out. So we're most of the way there for securing our site. Users can sign up, they can log in. We've controlled access to our form page, our save page and our delete page. And we've given visual cues in the navigation bar so the user can see if they're logged in or not. And when they are logged in, we're giving them the ability to end their session and sign out. So the last piece of this is then these UI components, our links and buttons on the games page. We can now use this same session variable. We can use this same logic to show or hide those elements. If the session is empty, these links and buttons shouldn't appear. So we'll go to the games page and let's start with line six right here at the top. We're just gonna wrap this in a simple if statement. So we'll say if not empty, our session username. Echo. And I'm just going to move the HTML for this link inside. And actually, I can make this one block of PHP code. So we'll print our heading. And if we have a username in the session, they'll see this link to add a new game. So I wanna try this out now again, both when I'm logged in and then when I'm logged out. That link should disappear when I'm logged out. It should be visible when I log in. So I've just added lines seven, eight, and nine. So I'm logged in here, we can see, and I have the add a new game link. If I log out and go back to the games page, notice now my link is gone. Log back in. My add a new game reappears. So we've taken care of the add game link. We also need logic around this heading that says actions. Our game titles 
should not be links when the user's not logged in, and the delete buttons should also be invisible. So we're gonna need this same logic in three other places on this page. Actually, we'll simplify it. We'll make it two other places. So I'm gonna scroll down first to my table where we create the headings. Just to make it simple, I'm actually just gonna wipe out the fifth column heading that says actions. They're just, I just won't put any text in there. You don't really need it. So just get rid of that. So I only have four TH, set it to TH tags. Title, release year, rating, and publisher. Just leave that one blank. So now the first, next thing we need to deal with inside our for each loop, for me it starts on line 39, our first, in our first column, Right, we're displaying the title, but we're displaying it inside an anchor tag so the user can click on that title. So we're gonna modify this a bit so that only when the user is authenticated does it show as a link. Otherwise, we're just gonna print the title out like we did in the other columns. So after I've got TR and TD, I'm going to put in a single quote here and a semicolon to finish that. And then down here, I'm going to make my closing TD. I'll just put in an echo and a single quote. So we're going to open and close a TD tag regardless, but now we need some logic here. If not empty, same if statement. Then I'll use an echo and I'll just wrap this in single quotes. So when someone's logged in, we want them, the game titles should be clickable. When they're not logged in, we're just gonna print the title. I guess that should go different. Whoops, sorry, now my brackets confused. So there's two different things that could appear inside this first column. An anonymous user just gets HTML, an authenticated user gets a link instead. And same in our delete, we'll just use the same if statement, similar. So I'm gonna close my last TD there. And again, say if not empty. So inside the column, I'm only going to print the delete buttons when a user's logged in. And then I'll just close down here.
So we're not, we'll just print a blank column if the user's not logged in. If they are logged in, we'll echo out the red delete buttons that we have here already. If not, there'll be nothing in this final TD, which is okay. I'll just try it out. I realize we're approaching 12. I will be pushing up to GitHub in a minute. So when I'm logged out now, I get a fully read-only version. My add link is gone, my delete links are gone, and my game titles I can't click on anymore. Once I log in, everything should come back. I can see all the links, all the buttons, log out, go back, read only. Let's go and strip out my password. I will push all of this up to GitHub. I should do it right now. Yeah, Mike, what I, 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 yeah, we could wrap it. I thought I was going to put an if statement around that as well. I actually just chose to remove it entirely. I, whoops. I just got rid of, I have to put my password back. I figured for simplicity, I would just get rid of the actions heading entirely. So it's just a blank header. That just saved me from writing another if statement around there. So you could wrap. I was just being a bit lazy. I could have wrapped this heading as well. I just decided I'll just, I don't really need that column heading. It's never useful, so I'll just blank it out. Then I don't need an if statement here. But if you keep it for logged in users, then yeah, you would want an if statement. I figure it looks okay like this. The heading, you know, these headings describe the data. I don't necessarily need a heading over the link. But if you wanted to keep it with an if statement, yes, you would need to do that. I kind of took a bit of a shortcut. Okay, it is 1156. So I've uploaded everything to GitHub. So anything you need to reference, you can find there. Um, I realize this may seem complicated. It's the first time we've done it, um, but it's something we'll do a lot. And as you're building applications, we're always gonna be securing areas of the site as well as toggling visibility for different components, depending on the authentication rules of the site. So anything you need is up on GitHub. I'm gonna stop the recording here and we're gonna do a little more with this when we come back in 10 minutes. And let's take a break here.